Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Evan again, and I'm back with another Gunpla TV review. This time we're looking at the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Phoenix Gundam. Now this Gundam doesn't come from a show, a movie, or a manga. No, the Phoenix Gundam is from a video game. This is a video game original. The SD Gundam G Generation to be exact. Within the games, this transformable mobile suit is said to be extremely powerful and of mysterious origin. So let's see, starting off with the box, you get six runners, seven if you count the stand. Uh, you also get a sheet of stickers. There are nine in total. You get two sets of eyes. One side is more for a cartoony look with pupils, and the other side has more of a realistic original Gundam look to them with no pupils. The other pieces are just to add some extra color to a few single colored white pieces. And of course, as usual, you have a nice instruction booklet in black and white in color and both English and Japanese. So here are all the runners. Uh, as you can see here, uh, two pieces actually fell off in the box. Uh, I think it's because these are on the runners a little bit more loosely so you can just pop them out by hand. Uh, so it's not a big deal, but I notice it's the same exact piece on both sides, so I'm wondering if it's just that one piece. So anyway, runners B, C, D1, and D2 are Phoenix Gundam specific runners, but the Beam Saber runner is your standard flat type Beam Sabers. Uh, they do appear a bit pinker than usual though. Uh, I put them next to a normal colored Beam Saber and it makes those look a lot redder. Speaking of red, the included stand is a nice add-in and comes in a nice clear red to match with the Phoenix Gundam's color scheme. Lastly, runner A is the SD frame. This is the frame you'd see in any cross silhouette line SD Gundam kit. The Gundam is built around this frame and as a result, no polycaps are needed, so that's kind of cool. Not only that, you can purchase the optional CS frame and attach your parts to this frame instead. The difference between the SD frame and the CS frame comes down to the proportions and the posability. The SD frame is more squat and does not have any elbow articulation or knees, just at the shoulder joints and wrists for the arms, and the hips and feet for the legs. The CS frame, on the other hand, has longer proportions and more joints for better articulation and more posing abilities. Though to be honest, the SD frame looks perfectly fine to me in these proportions, but you'll have to keep your posing expeditions to a minimum unless you want to swap out for the CS frame. Once completed, you have your Phoenix Gundam, two beam saber hilts, four blades, two short and two long, a stand, two guns, additional pieces for the transformation mode, and four hands. There are two fists for holding the weapons and two open hands. The open hands have holes in the palms. Uh, I'm assuming this is so that the Gundam can hold some accessories, but none of the included accessories can fit in there except for the blade hilts that fit in the hand. Uh, but they are a standard 3mm size, so I feel like you can put any accessories that you may have in those if you want to. After completion, the Phoenix Gundam has about the same amount of posability as it would if you had just the SD frame by itself. But you do get some extra pieces that move around, such as the six pieces of the wings that attach to the shoulders. There are two in the front of the shoulders, two on the sides, and two on the back. These all move on their own joints. They are a bit heavy, and you will notice that the shoulder joints are a bit floppy as a result. But they actually look really cool in my opinion, and the color separation on these is phenomenal for such a simple kit. For example, there's these tiny little yellow triangular pieces on the wings that could have easily just been a sticker on a simpler kit, but they are their own pieces here. I will say, unlike the Valky Lander where the pieces came out insanely easily, this kit you might want to have a nipper for uh, because these pieces did not come out as cleanly as I would have hoped. Uh, you do see a few extra nibs and stress marks where the pieces came off the runners. Not only that, the instruction booklet actually says you need the nippers for just the blades. If you don't have nippers, I'm sure you could just get it by with using scissors or you could try to pop them out, but I feel like that would bend the blades because they are made of a soft plastic. So you get two sets of eyes and I really like the way they did these. 
So the cartoony eyes are large and face closer to the front of the helmet, where if you turn the eyes around, there's actually a little extra white piece underneath the eyes for the more realistic looking ones. And so if you do that, the eyes are actually set back a little bit more so that the helmet actually has more of a set in look to the eyes. I really like the way they did that and it looks great. Also, I like the three dimensional look to the eyes have in this mode. Since you're putting an individual piece of foil sticker over each eye, you get a really nice three dimensional look to the eyes this way. Even without the stickers, since they're three dimensional and the plastic is a transparent green, I think it even looks cool that way. In fact, you could still see some of that transparent green in the head camera above the V-fin. In addition to the beam sabers, you also get two handguns, or you can attach these guns together to make one large gun. There's these removable parts on the top of each handgun that you can adjust to elongate the muzzle of the gun. There's also a transformation mode for this kit. I kind of hesitate to call it a transformation, rather it's an extra piece that you can attach the arms and legs to, and part of the chest to, to turn it into a jet mode. It's really simple to snap the pieces together into this mode, and it looks really nice. There's also an additional mode that's called the burning fire activation state, and so while it's in this jet transformation mode, you take the shoulder pieces off and place them on a joint that causes them to face more forward and the white plastic pieces actually stick out a little bit more for a little neat effect. It's nothing too fancy, but it's a nice little addition to such a simple kit. So back to the stand, this is your normal stand that you would see in a lot of these kind of kits. A lot of the HG kits have these too. Uh, the one small issue I have is for some reason the hole on the Gundam is shallow, so the peg doesn't fit in all the way, so it's kind of wobbly on the stand. It's not a big deal. I haven't had it fall off yet, but it is kind of odd that they did that. But when you do transform it into the jet, there's no issues. That peg is fine. So in my opinion, this is a really nice looking kit, especially considering how simple it is. The uh, SD Gundam kits are usually pretty easy builds, but the color separation it looks great. The design of the Gundam is also amazing. I really like the way they did the eyes. That's probably my favorite aspect of this kit. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the cartoony SD Gundam eyes, but when you flip them around to the more realistic looking ones, this guy looks really cool. I would probably recommend using a hobby knife and some nippers to get the pieces out because I'm not too thrilled with how they look as they are if you just push them out. Also, depending on if you want to pose your kit more, you might want to go for the CS frame as well. I'd easily recommend this kit to anyone who likes SD Gundam, obviously, and uh, anyone who's just looking for an easy kit to make. The Again, the color separation on this guy and the detail is just phenomenal, especially considering how simple he is. I built him in maybe an hour tops. He was faster to build than the Valky Lander, and he looks twice as good. I definitely recommend giving this one a look. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching this episode of Gunpla TV, and I will see you next time.